So the idea of this session is to have a look at lipids and make another one of those links between structure and function and how when we change structure, we change function. Okay, so we're going to get to groups with lipids and then at a later stage, we'll do another lesson looking at cell membranes and how lipids and things are built into cell membranes and then how that also controls the transport across membranes. So, moving swiftly forward. So, basic facts about lipids. Helps if your bees don't look like bees. When we think about lipids, um, we're not working in the same level of detail as with carbohydrates and proteins. Lipids are an enormously diverse group, so we don't get to know them as well okay, as we do the carbohydrates and the proteins. So there's going to be a few generalizations that we're going to make as we move forward. So, a few things to bear in mind. Lipids are all organic molecules. and they are insoluble in water. They are esters made of fatty acids plus alcohol. So what are we looking at? When we talk about alcohol, then we are talking about, in specifics now, glycerol. So again, a reminder that there's a lot more variation out there, but we're working with a little subset. So we're dealing with just two different types of lipids, which really tie in with what we're studying for AS Bio. So glycerol is the alcohol that we're going to deal with. And he's lovely and simple. And then a whole lot of hydrogens. And it does help to be aware of this. Remember, being familiar with your structural formula helps you identify these things when they throw them at you in the exam. And the thing to note is that you've got three OH groups here. So OHs should be sounding familiar because OHs are involved in all sorts of bonds. So when you've got three OHs, you have that possibility for three bonds. When we're talking about fatty acids, then we are talking about long, enormous, well, sort of complicated molecules, okay? So C double bond O, single bond OH. This looks familiar, we've seen him before. And then we have a carbon chain. Now, this carbon chain can go on for a lot of carbons, so we're not going to sit and draw it all out, okay? One of the special features that we can have is a double bond. So it keeps going, and then we have a carbon. Okay, so I'm just indicating there that we're going on for a lot more carbons that I'm drawing here. So remember, each carbon must have four bonds, so we fill up with hydrogen. One, two, three, four. This one, however, has already three. So he only gets one hydrogen. This one also has three, he only gets one. This one needs two. This one needs two. Okay, so a few features here. One is that we've got lots of carbon-hydrogen bonds. Now, when we talk about releasing energy through respiration, it is these carbon-hydrogen bonds that are broken. So the more carbon-hydrogen bonds you have, the more energy then you're going to be able to release. So that's one thing. We've got lots of carbon-hydrogen. Also remember that carbon-hydrogen, the CH bond, doesn't form one of those um, dipole bonds. So we don't have this possibility of hydrogen bonding. Okay, we are hydrophobic. We completely uncharged for this whole hydrocarbon tail. The other thing that we've got here is our kink in the tail. So here we have a double bond. 
Okay, what it creates is a kink in the tail. And that affects fluidity. Okay, and what it also means is this is the, our difference between saturated and uh, saturated and unsaturated fats. And you come across those in terms of food you eat as well, in terms of dietary recommendations. So saturated means that we are full of hydrogen. We couldn't fit any more hydrogen into that molecule if we wanted to. Unsaturated, it means has carbon to carbon double bonds. So if we didn't have a double bond here, we would get two more hydrogens in here. So this means we are not fully saturated with hydrogen. Unsaturated, not max hydrogens. So that has two implications. One implication is we have less carbon-hydrogen bonds. So we actually have less energy yield per unit mass. However, it also means, as we said just now, it affects fluidity. So in this case, when you have these double bonds, okay, we get a kink in the tail. Now, if you think about it, if you had beautifully saturated tails, they can lie lovely and close to each other because they're all exactly the same. If we put kinks in those tails, now all of a sudden, of course, the kinks aren't necessarily gonna be in the same place. We're not lying close to each other. Okay, and when we don't lie close to each other, then we more fluid. So when you increase saturation, you increase fluidity. And now we got to start talking about fats versus oils, because lipids is both fats and oils. So you can start to see how this actually expands to an even bigger scale, where have you, as you have your, your, your oil versus your butter, okay? At, at room temperature, as long as room temperature isn't too hot in the summer, then butter is a solid, okay? So we're talking about things that are staying closer together. Oil is, is, is a liquid, it, it's more fluid, it's got less saturation. So there's all these sorts of sort of things where you can take it elsewhere. And the more you take your biology out into the rest of your life, the more memorable it's going to be. So please, bear these things in mind next time you're in the kitchen. Okay, when you're reading ingredients, what does it mean when they say that the, 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 um, the margarine is plant-based? Well, that means that it's six oils, but how did they get it to be solid? We saturated it, okay? We decreased the fluidity of what we're dealing with. Tie it all together. It's quite fun, quite, quite fun and quite fancy. Right. So this is our basic structures. <clears throat> we have our glycerol and we have our fatty acids. And we're just going to make a note here. We have another one of those useful OH groups. Okay, so important in the same kind of binding we've seen everywhere else. So Let's move on and actually do a little bit of talking about that bonding. Okay, so bonding in lipids, condensation, hydrolysis, water out, water in, it's all the same, which is wonderful. It makes life a lot easier for everybody. So, what is the bond? Remember, we have a glycosidic bond in carbohydrates. We have a peptide bond in proteins, and we have an ester bond in lipids. And as we said on the, the previous section, that we have hydroxyl groups there in our alcohol. We have hydroxyl groups on our fatty acid, and hydroxyl, hydroxyl, well, remove an H2O, you're left with an O, joining everything together, magic. So we're gonna zoom in just on one. So that's a piece out of our alcohol. So this is, remember, we're talking about glycerol when we're talking about our lipids. Okay, we also have an OH to a carbon to a double bond O. So this is the top of our fatty acid. And then we're just going to 
make nice with the chain. We're not going to draw all of those hydrocarbons in that chain. We'd be here for, from, now until forever. Okie dokes. So, it is exactly the same as every single other one you've done. A circle around an OH and H removes H2O. Then, we have a condensation reaction and we bring everybody together. Okay, and now we have an ester bond. Okay, so nice and straightforward. Okay, you've done condensation um, and you're happy with this and you've got the idea and it's all happening. But the thing here, okay, right, so we know that we reversed by hydrolysis. Okay, we're happy with that. Standard, normal. The thing is that this has a really important implication, okay? Because if you think about it, before we have hydrolysis, we would have a lipid. We would have glycerol plus fatty acids, okay? It's all one thing. Hydrolysis is going to create two things. It's going to create glycerol, if you could spell it, it helps. And it's going to create fatty acids. They're not called fatty acids for fun, okay? They are called fatty acids because they are acids. And that's a thing to bear in mind. How can we look at hydrolysis of lipids? We can look at the pH. As soon as we hydrolyze lipids, we increase the free fatty acids. That means we're going to decrease the pH. We're going to make the solution more acidic. So here's a lovely thing to think about, right? You've got enzymes that are gonna do this, okay? Enzymes are going to hydrolyze this breaking down of our lipid into glycerol and the fatty acids. But now, fatty acids, so as soon as we do our hydrolysis, we're going to increase the fatty acids, we're going to decrease the pH. Now what's the effect on the enzyme? So you're starting to link things all together, okay? And think, hey, I'm gonna, decrease the pH on my enzyme. So maybe this is a special enzyme. Maybe this enzyme is less affected by changes in pH than say a different kind of enzyme. Because remember we've got different enzymes in different places and with different specificities depending on um, where they are found. So, I mean, you've got things living in boiling water vents in the deep ocean. The enzymes there are going to be able to have a much higher optimum temperature than enzymes in our bodies. Enzymes in your stomach will have a different optimum pH to enzymes in your skin cells. So there's all sorts of different things that, that yes, okay, we learn the classic enzymes, but there's so many specific special situations like this one where life gets more interesting. Okay, so bear it in mind. It's also a lovely practical question. Um, looking at hydrolysis of, of lipids and looking at change in pH. So you can see the progress of your enzyme reaction by actually tracking the pH change in your solution. Okay, so now we have thoroughly linked in bonding um, and an understanding of, of structure and bonding and then the implications thereof. So we shall move into then a little bit more on the specifics of our two lipids that we're going to work with. Okie dokes. Right. I see the chat is going as well. 
Okay, I'm glad you made it in, Simon. I'm glad that that um, internet got itself sorted out. Okay, so back to lipids. The lipids that we study are triglycerides and phospholipids. Okay, remember, enormous variety amongst lipids. We're doing a narrow section linked to what it is that we're studying. So, triglycerides all about energy storage, insulation, buoyancy, and metabolic water. Okay, so energy storage, we touched on briefly already. Um, we have a large, large, large number of hydrogen carbon bonds. Okay, the thing is, we can't just say lots of hydrogen carbon bonds. We have to say a greater proportion of hydrogen carbon bonds than in the same amount per unit mass of carbohydrates. Okay, so if, you, if you're looking at a comparison, you have to actually use comparative language. And that's why your English, again, is so important when it comes to biology. This is not just parrot some facts out. It is not just, I know something about lipids, let me write it down. It's really about understanding what the question is asking you and about giving an answer that then rel relates to that question specifically and using the correct language to get your point across. So, you have a... Let's actually do this in a different color. Okay, so we've got a greater proportion of carbon-hydrogen bonds than in the carbohydrates, okay, and that is then per unit mass. So CHO is an abbreviation you can use when you're studying. It's not an abbreviation that you can use when you're actually writing an answer. Okay, CHO is what we use to abbreviate for carbohydrates because they are just carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Okay, it's like easier. Okay, much shorter than writing carbohydrates, but don't get into the sloppy habit of using it in your answers. Okay, always per unit mass. And the thing is that we then, when we, oxid, when we have oxidation during respiration, then we have a greater amount of energy released. Okay, there's not energy in the triglyceride. We're going to respire and that respiration is going to create energy. So it's really important that you get all your steps in. Okay, IGCC, maybe they would have accepted, you know, a slightly dodgier, more vague answer. Because remember at IG, you're studying double the number of topics that you study at AS. So you do them a lot shallower. When you get to AS, you've got to get to grips with the details. And it's those process details that you step through that is crucially important. Right, energy storage, insulation, buoyancy, metabolic water, all functions of triglycerides, okay. We want to keep that um, homeostasis, that temperature control. Insulation is, is important. If we think about whales and blubber, then insulation and buoyancy, both of them spring to mind. So when you're thinking about fats and lipids, thinking about triglycerides, think about whales. Okay, there you've got two of them ticked off without even having to think about it. And metabolic water is that lovely little kangaroo rat that doesn't even need to drink because it gets enough water from metabol metabolism of triglycerides, which is just fantastic and crazy and cool. Okie dokies. So this is all our, our functions of triglycerides and, and how does that relate to our structure and how is that structure different from the phospholipid. So let's just digress quickly into functions of phospholipids. And this is plain and simple in our lives. Membrane structure. Okay, not just the cell surface membrane, the membranes of all those membrane-bound organelles as well. Okay, so nucleus, mitochondrion, 
rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The lysosomes have a membrane around them. Anything with a membrane, that membrane is made of phospholipids. So this is all membranes in the cell. Right, so how does this relate to structure? Well, triglyceride, we're going to make life a little bit easier. We have our glycerol and we have three fatty acids. So remember glycerol had three OHs. The maximum number of triglycerides that you, maximum number of fatty acids that you could bond to a glycerol is three. So in a triglyceride, we've maximized our fatty acids. So we have maximized our energy storage. Okay, we've maximized the number of carbon hydrogen bonds because we've got three fatty acids which are full of carbon hydrogen bonds. Phospholipids, slightly different. Phospholipids, yes, we have our glycerol, same as before. But we only have two fatty acids. So already we're not so good for energy storage because we have less carbon hydrogen bonds. But we have one funky new feature. Instead of a fatty acid tail, here we have a phosphate group. Right, so now life is completely different. Remember we said that this entire molecule is hydrophobic. Think about it, it's all carbon hydrogens. Okay, so we don't have any OHs because our OHs got lost when we got bonded. So, whole molecule is hydrophobic. You're familiar with it. You make pasta, you put oil in the pot, the oil floats on the top, it doesn't mix in with the water. Okay, when it comes to a phospholipid, this phosphate group changes everything. Let's actually move this over so that the label makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so still a phosphate group, still in the same position, just the label moved. What we've got here is just like our triglyceride. This is hydrophobic. But this phosphate group, he's charged. If he's charged, he's hydrophilic. And this is the basis of membrane structure. This difference within the one molecule of hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Okay, so triglyceride, we are maximizing energy storage. We're maximizing carbon-hydrogen bonds. Phospholipids, we want this charge difference. Okay, we want hydrophilic and hydrophobic. And then we're going to simplify him even further, okay? And we draw him like this. So here is our hydrophilic head. Here is our hydrophobic tail. So if you put a whole lot of these little guys into an aqueous environment, they're going to arrange themselves because these hydrophobic tails are going to say, ah, I don't want that water. No, thank you very much. So all the tails will sit together. All the heads, though, will be quite happy. They don't mind talking to the water. So they'll go on the outside. And this is how we start to get that structure, okay? That bilayer that we see in cell membranes. Topic of another lesson, okay? But it's all down to the fact that we have this difference between hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. Okay, so molecules form associations in aqueous environments. 
and that's how it goes. So it's all linking all the way back. I mean, we're talking about glycerol having three OHs, and then we have three fatty acids that we maximize. But glycerol has three OHs, we can have two fatty acids and a phosphate group. Okay, it all ties back to the basics of those structures. We change that structure slightly, then we change the function. So it's another reminder that throughout your biology, focus on the structure and understand it in terms of the function. Because when you're tying things together, it's so much easier to remember and it makes so much more sense. So that is everything I have for today. Um, are there any specific questions that have come up in this session? Seeing as we have two minutes still to go of the time slot. Or is everybody happy?